We're going to take a look at what's been grabbing headlines in the papers today with Solange Mujan, who's on the set. Hi, Solange. Hi, Nini. Great to have you on the set. You're starting off with two competing headlines that are coming out of Italy today. Yeah, between the death of Gina Lolo Brigida uh, and the nabbing of the uh, an Italian mob boss, there is no question who, in the Italian press, uh, has made the front page. It is the ultimo uh, padrino, the last godfather that nabbed the top story in La Stampa. The Italian the Italian paper goes through how Matteo Messina Denaro was taken away in police custody, as we see there, uh, after visiting a health clinic. And it is actually those health records that helped. They were key to his capture. Now, a similar headline is also coming from La Repubblica, which calls him the last killer because this most brutal of mafia men who boasted filling a cemetery by himself, well, he uh, had been on the run for 30 years. Uh, and until now, he'd actually managed to escape uh, not only uh, evading arrest, but also evading uh, getting himself on camera, images, pictures of himself. His arrest, the paper writes, uh, helps break down the notion of the mafia being a faceless, intangible presence. Uh, that's according to La Repubblica, that the mafia can be taken down. And it puts one of the top godfathers, the last of a certain era, behind bars. Now, of course, there is that other big story coming out of Italy as well. A legend uh, from the golden age of Hollywood has died. Yeah, and for full front page coverage of Gina Lola Brigida's death, we have to actually turn to other front pages, other European pa uh, papers. Le Temps calls her an Italian epic, a diva of the silver screen. And the Portuguese paper Dario, Diario de Noticia, says that she was the Mona Lisa of the 20th century with a tribute following her death at age 95. Meanwhile, Liberation recounts how she was called the most beautiful woman in the world, but with time she actually decided to move away from her sex symbol image and become a photographer. Let's uh, come back to France now, where there's been a lot of talk about the future of nuclear energy. Yeah, the French Senate today is discussing this issue of what the future will look like for French nuclear energy, namely whether to build new reactors. And it's finally accelerating its pace, its push for new ones, according to Celebrates Le Figaro, which explains that a bill, uh, this bill will try to keep administrative roadblocks from slowing down uh, the construction of new nuclear reactors. Now, the Minister of uh, uh, Energy Transition tells the paper that, it, it, that France is in a race and it doesn't have any minute to spare. Uh, now, the Communist Party is expected to vote for the text, uh, the Greens against it, but for the leftist paper L'Humanité, it reminds readers that France's aging reactors, well, they may become roadblocks uh, or a, way, a sort of wake-up call uh, over the burden that reactors become once they age. Also in the papers today, some parallels are being drawn between France and the UK. Yeah, the Financial Times, the British paper, it has an article today about uh, the challenges that Emmanuel Macron is facing or will be facing starting this Thursday with the upcoming national strike over pension reforms. And he is not the only one facing strikes. As this cartoon from Patrick Blower illustrates to us, in the UK, strikers are also vo voicing their anger and angst against the government. So much so that Rishi Sunak is having a pretty down week, as we see in this cartoon by Christian Adams, uh, in which every day is a blue day. It's not just Blue Monday. Uh, and this is because of a pile of issues from strikes to inflation to Scotland. Scotland is the inspiration for another cartoon, this one by Dave Brown, uh, where you have the Prime Minister <laughs> losing his Scottish hat as he tries to play a many-piped bagpipe, which is made of Nicholas Sturgeon head. Now, this image is referring not only to her push uh, for Scottish independence, but it's also, as the Times of London tells us, the Scottish edition of the Times, um, it's also talking about uh, something that was a bill that was passed by the Scottish Parliament to make it easier for people to legally change their gender. And London has uh, axed this idea. Uh, the law would have removed uh, the need for a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria and also lower the uh, minimum age to 16 to request it. The fact that the Tories have blocked this uh, Scottish bill has been met with much ire in Scotland, with Sturgeon saying, as the Daily Record tells us, that she will see them in court.
All right, just to wrap up, Nessa Lange, you've got a story that would make Zeus, the god of lightning, pretty impressed. Yeah, or it could make him very angry if we sort of follow the themes of Greek mythology. The site Science tells us that a group of international uh, scientists in Switzerland have managed to control lightning bolts, specifically to control where they land. And they did so, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, by using lasers. It is, the scientists say, a major breakthrough, the biggest in in regard to lightning since Benjamin Franklin uh, invented the lightning rod. Uh, once commercialized, and it's important to note this is still far way off for it to be commercialized, this technology could not only save the lives of the hundreds of people who are killed by lightning every year, but it could also uh, save billions of dollars of losses, uh, be it because of power outages, damaged electronic systems, or even forest fires and all the damage they uh, cause if uh, they're created by lightning. Fascinating stuff, Solange. Thank you so much for that, Solange Mujan, with your press review today.